This is Crime Cruise, Love Boat Exposed, Saturday on the Love Boat, the podcast that hunts down and tears apart shenanigans on this classic TV show. I see an awful lot of bodies who really have nothing to be ashamed of. When laws, morals, and behavior go rogue, he's a student of marine biology, and I know a lot of marines who like to study her biology. We are there. Saturday on the Love Boat, Julius came to join an all-male club, but she's shocked the things they ask her to do. Now, from Studio 109, welcome aboard. I think it's time you and I got to know each other. That a man gets very lonely at sea. Yes, I can imagine. Yes, yes, yes. Welcome to Crime Crews, Love Boat Exposed. High season, low morals. Those are all the words that all make words. up our title. And I still ponder that question that you magnified from the opening of the show, Charlotte, and that is, what did Julie do to join that all boys I club? I know. I still don't have an answer to that. <laughs> it's coming up in some season that's ahead of us. It has to be. Oh, my gosh. Well, but I'm... I don't know at that point why Julie would be shocked at anything the boys <laughs> ask her to do. You know, you're right, unless it just right? crossed the line in a way we've not come to yeah. know. Well, I am Rob, you are Charlotte, and out there with the captain's hat. I am producer Caleb. He is producer Caleb. Yes, uh, we're all back together again. Our weekly gathering, yep. which is always uh, is always welcome, is mm. always a a place we come home to. Yeah, agreed. The three of us, and of course our audience, which goes far and wide. We have some of our biggest cities in the United States mm-hmm. are uh, number one, Los Angeles. Yeah. And yeah. number two is New York. We've got some in Montana, and we have other countries. We have Australia. I think you've got your fans out there, producer Caleb. And, Lovely. And it crosses. Shout out to you guys. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> it, it, yeah, they're a good bunch down there. The down under. Yeah. <sighs> yeah, so we're, cu- we're worldwide. We're countrywide, and we're just going to keep pushing it and pushing it yep. until we cover the globe, including Russia. Okay. We'll have a Russian version. Why? Well, really? N- no. Okay, I didn't think so. We have to we, we have a North Korea version. You know, hit, hit those guys. Oh yeah, we I'm, I'm sure hit those Kim guys. would love. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm sure North Koreans are big love boat fans. <laughs> I don't want to get our studio bombed. <laughs> no, I don't either. <laughs> like, what, what was that movie that Seth Rogen and James oh, oh, yeah, Franco made? Dic- what was it called? Uh, Dictator. Yeah. Right? Or like, like, yeah, the like the interview or something. Yeah. Oh, the interview. Yeah. The interview. Yeah. The, the, yes. they kind of buried that movie. You don't even hear about it. No, because I think it really got some. I think it really got North Korea mad. I I, I watched it. I, I can see why North Korea yeah. didn't like it. It's, sure. it's funny. It's a good one. <laughs> I should really dig it up. I bet it's not a Max or any of those kind of things either. Well, we are in season three, nineteen seventy nine. Oh yes, and this one is September nineteen seventy nine. Okay. I think this episode caps off September in nineteen seventy nine before heading into Halloween season back in the day before the turn into nineteen eighty. Mm. What comes at us? I don't know. Producer Caleb, are we supposed to know anything or do we just roll these clips that you've pulled out? And by the way, let me mention this because there are always a couple new people tuning in every week. Producer Caleb. He pulls clips from each episode of The Love Boat. We started at episode one, and now we're all the way into season three. He pulls the clips that are, how would you describe them? Just either full of shenanigans or maybe a slightly illegal or just something that makes you go ick, which could be lots of things on this show that make you just go ick. The first word we always go to is shenanigans. Yeah. Ick is a good number, too. Yeah, I like the shenanigans. I also like when Caleb says tomfoolery, though. The tomfoolery? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank I've, you, I've thank actually you very like much. tried to upload that into my like daily vernacular because I just think it's something <laughs> that needs to be used more. It needs to come back, you know. The I, I Tom totally Fuller. agree. Yeah, yeah. Tom Occasionally, Fuller. there is horseplay too. Oh wow! Look at him. Oh wow! That was a good one. Yeah. So, yeah, so, so you pull the clips episode. and you present them to us. I'm sorry, you yeah. pull the yeah. clips, you present them to us. He literally is in charge of all content on the show. And then we all judge them together. Yep. What do you got for us? What kind of things could you tell us? I, If there are any new listeners, which there always are, I recommend you guys go back. Uh, go back to episode one. <laughs> listen all the way up to us now. Because this episode, I won't spoil much, but Doc redeems himself. I'm sorry. There is a what? redemption for Doc. How the is that scumbag even? of the earth, the slimiest man to exist on our screens, has a redemption. We have like 2.3 seasons worth of Doc doing the wrong thing. The wrong always. thing, always. So I'm um, actually surprised. You know what? But Caleb, he could redeem himself and then just be a dick in the next episode. Well, yes, I, I yeah. guarantee in like the next episode moving forward, 
he's back to his old slimy ways. But this story arc with the duck, he redeems himself. There's oh, there's actually I'm like a, oh, that's, I respect that doc. That's a good move. Well, okay. On that note, we're going to just start our clips. I'm looking at a taxi cab. It looks like mm-hmm. old uh, comedic like- actor, Buddy Hackett, his name was. And he's but is this set or is this actually outside? Because I can't tell if that blue is actually like the sky or if that's a stage. Good question. We're going to see what happens. It almost here. looks like a taxi from the set of Taxi. It does. Yeah, the, absolutely. In those days. Uh, we'll know. We'll see. And we will report back. And we will here report. we go. They don't fall in the water. <laughs> Cab driver's talking to a passenger who's going on the boat. <laughs> She's looking. She's looking at him. Why don't you come with me? What? What? Why not? We'll have three days of laugh. I don't believe this. Okay. You blew it. It's chance of a lifetime. Strangers. You blew it. Someday you're going to say, I could have, I should have, I wanted to. Okay. Who my mother wanted me to. Okay. My father wanted me Oh, shut up for a minute. I got to do something. <laughs> Dispatch. This is a Cab 62. I'm at the Port of Los Angeles, Break 93. There's something wrong with the cab. It won't steer. It can't come back the way it went. Over and bon voyage. <laughs> okay, I'm just as crazy as you are. <laughs> if only life were so easy. If Okay, I have many questions that are surrounding us. <laughs> so what we just saw was a woman get out of a taxi cab. And from my impression, because I don't know anything in the background, she literally invited her taxi cab driver, who she does not know. Is this right, Kate, Caleb? To go yeah, on to... Right to go onto a cruise with her. One, girls, he's not even attractive. Like the least attractive person you can imagine. I would not invite him. If my taxi cab driver had been Tyrese Gibson, I would have been like, all right, let's go. But like, I don't understand this. And also, is he about to board the Princess Cruise with a stack of papers? Like what's what's he getting? What's those stack of papers for? Maybe it's like his receipt book or something like that that cab drivers have. Well, shoot! If he's just going to leave his taxes at Long Beach, he might as well just leave the paper in there too. Good point. Good yeah. point. I, well, who knows? Maybe I, this, I I kept this episode in <laughs> on this episode this clip uh, because again it's it's the security issue. Yeah. He doesn't have a ticket. Wow. No. She, she she's randomly out of the loop, like, hey, come on this boat with me, and he went, all right, and they let him. So they both don't have. Passes or t- she has. She, she does. has okay. a ticket to she the cruise. Okay. So apparently so you can just, just say, like, "I'm bringing this person." Yeah. And they're like, "Great." Yeah. Go you right have ahead. a plus Lord one apparently that you're allowed to bring. I'll say this: Which, the woman w- was an attractive woman with crazy hair, but you can tell she has to be some form of lunatic herself because, again, it's not Tyrese Gibbs. And he, it, she's uh, yeah. bringing a stranger on who's a slob. Yeah. He says, what? No. And then she pushes the whole scenario where she's like, you're going to wish you did. That must have been some cab ride from her apartment (laughs) to the Princess Cruise dock. I have a fun fact about this this cab driver. Yeah. Completely unrelated. Yeah. He is the voice of Scuttle in The Little Mermaid. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. That makes sense. That's that's the only fun fact I have about him. Okay. (laughs) It is a fun (laughs) fact, though. Well, Buddy Hackett was huge back in the day. Without any further ado, here we go. What's that? Yes. Uh-uh. This is the doc. You're not sticking me with that thing. Oh, come on now. Don't you want to get better quickly? He's I in think bed. I'd rather suffer for a while. A woman's tending <laughs> to him. Now, I'll tell you what. You take this shot like a big brave boy, and I'll give you a nice red lollipop. How about that? Oh, God. No way. No. <laughs> I hope your malpractice insurance is paid up. <laughs> and he turns I over to show his... Doc was, uh, oh, sorry. Uh, we didn't realize you were occupied. I guess you do want to be alone, huh? <laughs> what do you guys get out of here? Let me die in peace. Oh, he's not going to. Oh, no, 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 no. He's going to be fine in a couple of days if he behaves himself. Okay. I'm telling you. Uh, <laughs> what, explain it. what I, I mean so i mean i just yeah, don't understand it, why first of all they're talking to him like he's a child which i mean i you know the doc does act like a kid sometimes but also it's like this weird like mommy son relationship thing like what is the deal with these two people Kate, caleb is she a doctor is she a nurse is she yeah, just some girl she, she is a doctor yeah and okay. the doc <clears throat> the docs come down with the with like the flu. I initially I thought it was like some sort of oh. STD because he got and I, it, it would make sense, you know, right, since yeah. how the doc sleeps with anything <laughs> that walks. Um, 
but yeah, he he comes down with the flu, and the doc's like, "No, I'm fine. I'm a doctor. I, I'll push it off. I'm I'm okay." And then this woman, who's like a customer on this cruise, she's like, "Oh, I'm a doctor. Like I'm a certified doctor, and you need to take care of yourself. Let me take care of you." And so then, yeah, we just saw this scene. But I I didn't even connect those dots that you made, Charlotte. Like, you, yeah, there was like a, some so weird, yeah, mummy son kind of thing Pretty going on. Really weird. And then for the listeners, the woman is give, trying to give Doc a shot, but he's being childish. Uh, turns out the shot is an ass shot. Mm-hmm. Um, and so, and then the gopher and Isaac walk in. And uh, why which, did they just walk in when he didn't even say anything? They right. literally knocked on the door and busted it wide open. What if he had had a patient in there that was an actual patient on his table? Was that his apartment or is it one in the same? No, because when, when they when they opened up the door and the two dudes were standing there, Isaac and Gopher, yeah, right. it said Alan Bricker, uh, cruise doctor on the thing. So that's his like slash office I'm, I'm pretty slash sure room. It's, yeah, I'm pretty sure it's it's canon to the, the love bird that his office is <laughs> yeah. also connected very, to It makes sense because remember, that's where he trapped Char- Charo. Oh, yeah. 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 It's very Bill Cosby of them because, you know, Cosby had his gynecological practice in the basement of his home. Uh, very oh. much so. Yeah, so, I mean, so, we're just, you know. So <laughs> It's very typical for these doctors to have home offices, apparently. It, 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 apparently in the love boat it is. And Doc is prepping for a big pants pull down, mm-hmm. as we just heard. And they walk in, uh, Gopher and, and Isaac, thinking what? I don't know what they're thinking, considering she's standing there with a damn needle in her arm and his right. butt is... Ex- well, I don't know what kind of kinky stuff they think that they're doing, but right. it's, it's obvious to me. But I also wonder if that girl had not been an attractive, tall, slender blonde, mm. if he would have liked having any other doctor on the boat give him an ass shot. Well, that woman is an actress named Susan Sullivan, who was on like Dharma and Greg and a bunch okay. of sitcoms over the years. Very familiar face. And apparently she's Doc's mommy figure. Where does this go? I don't know. We'll see. I'm telling you, I love you. Oh, God. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, it's oh, her. God. What? Let me ask you a question, all right? Anything. How many of your patients fall for you? What? Wait a Answer minute. Answer the question. Oh, that's Wait. different. Is it? Mm. Well, sure. All right, Adam, then listen to me. <laughs> I made you feel better. You think you feel something for me, you'll get over it in a minute. It's not important. But it is important. Of course it is. It's important to you and to every patient who's ever felt like this. But what you love is a kind of superhuman ministering angel who protected you when you were too weak and vulnerable to take care of yourself. Well, Emily, how about you? One doc's better than no doc. You gonna be all right? Sure. Have fun. They barge in again. Hey, what right. for you? I've got a drink for you. Oh, oh really? Yeah. Doc. Yeah. Who are you writing to at this time of the night? Oh. Stay with us. We'll be right back. It's taken a while. You know what but you now are I'm now? A person you, I jo- enjoy. You're you're in your skin. You know, yeah. you're totally in your skin, which is great to see. Yeah, so it, proud of you. Doesn't it just feel? You just feel all of a sudden more content in everything. Yeah. I don't feel like I have to chase a certain yes outcome, or I just yep. feel I'm like whatever. This is. Yeah, I mean, I think back to like when I was, in, you know, in my twenties and whatever, and I was so like I should dress like that person, and I should mm-hmm. get my hair cut by so I look like that person. And- Some old patients of mine. I have a few apologies to make. <laughs> wow. Okay, guys, hold your thoughts. We'll be right back with more Love Boat Exposed. Go to loveboatexposed.com to send us a message, leave a voicemail, or learn more about the show and our team. Who knows? You might just be invited to the captain's table. It's a pleasure to welcome you aboard. I'm speaking for my entire crew. Well, there's a lot to it. Unpack. There's a lot to unpack. First of all, people fall in love on this boat within 24 hours, and it's like an okay thing. He loves her. Puppy dog love. Yeah, but I kind of liked that she put him in his place, though. And kind of was like, no, right? you don't, little boy. Listen to me. This is why you feel this way. And also, how weird is it to see someone actually pull out a pen and paper yeah. to communicate with yeah, someone? Good point. Right? Weird. Yeah. Well, I also like how she straight up called him out. She was yeah. like... How many patients mm. do you yeah. make better and they fall in love with you? 
right. every patient. He he was like, oh, that's that's that that doesn't happen at all. Every single episode, yeah. That like how many letters is he place. gonna have to write a bunch? I better hope I one gets off of Poco. I mean, there's not copy and paste. Copy. No, and paste. he has to actually physically write yeah. the letters. No, he came to a lot of quick conclusions and a game plan that was like so rapid. And again, everyone barged in to his yes. room, including Julie this time, yeah. which again is his room, is his office. I guess it's okay. But oddly, Doc with his pants down in bed, anyone could walk into it any given anyone time. Anyone can walk into it. And also, how the hell is that a sterile, clean environment? For you to oh, for Lord. you to like examine people. Uh, there is something that's bugging me with this. There must be another entrance for the actual office because we've seen it comes into a waiting room. Because remember the girl with the magazines, Meredith mm-hmm. Baxter, and she came yep. in looking for those centerfolds she, she was in. She came in a different way. It wasn't like she walked into his bedroom. So there is a waiting room, but this is a door with a plaque that does say Doctor Bricker, Adam uh-huh. Bricker, but clearly it's not into a waiting room. I- yeah. I feel like if I were to like map out how his room is, there's his room, yes, room to like the left, this. and then to the right, there's like a door that goes into his like examining room or yeah. like his like actual doctor's office, and then in front of the doctor's office is the waiting room. I guess I would assume he's on some sort of corner of the ship, right? Because like, we've seen images of hallway. him with a person laying on a table. Absolutely, yeah. Yes. When he had to do that surgery in 1978. Well, if any of our audience wants to sketch out what producer Caleb yeah, just yeah, described, yeah. Great, we'll yeah. take it. And yeah. if any of the old creators or crew cast, you know, the folks behind the scene of the love boat want to explain this to us, yeah, please Paramount call Studio it. 87, if you could send us what that looked like. <laughs> well, oh, and by the way, that did look like the taxi cab in that first scene was set up in a studio, but the yeah. sound in the background, they made it sound like they it was did. a busy port mm-hmm. of uh, Los Angeles, I guess they said. All right, look, there seems to just be one more clip, and okay. where does it go? <laughs> I don't think so. I'm, I'm perfectly healthy. Seems to me I've heard those words before. Now, I can't give you orders, of course, but Adam is an excellent physician. Who just happens to be free for the weekend? <laughs> well, I uh, hate to admit it, Doctor, but you've got yourself a patient. Good. But let me warn you, if you start thinking you're in love with me, I'm not going to talk you out of it. Oh. Okay. Okay. Just, okay. Back to his slimy ways. So is this going to go, are, is this going to, are they going to do a part two with her? Or is this like the last time we see of her? Because I feel like I, she might actually be an equal to, like, I feel like he might actually have to respect her. Because one, she's a doctor. Right. Just like he is. Mm-hmm. Two, she's already stood up to him. And now she's apparently sick, so she gets a free week on the cruise because she's sick. Is that what's happening, Caleb? I think he's just, he he told he said he has, like, the week off. So oh. I'd assume he's probably just gone to his actual house or whatever to take care of her. Okay. But the, the thing that I kind of, it, it kind of upsets me because the last scene that we watched, Doc had this I want to say redemption. Yeah. Where he realizes yes. that every time a patient's fallen in love with him, it's been a mistake and he's taken advantage of it. Mm-hmm. And so he wants to apologize to everyone. But then he goes, if you fall in love with me, I'm not going to say anything to stop it. He he, he just went back to square one. Yep. Like did. all he... of that redemption is just destroyed. Right back. Uh, what, what What is that expression? A cheetah can't cha- change its spots or something? Mm. Or stripes? Mm. What? Spots. A leopard can't change its spots. Sp- I don't know. Yeah, Those somebody has stripes yeah, and spots. 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 Well, one thing is for sure, he wrote a lot of letters very quickly. He very quickly. Or he gave up when he started. Because yeah. it, that would take literally a month to reach out to so many people. Mm-hmm. And then all of a yeah. sudden, he's back to his old self. Yep. Back to his old self, old doc. Well... One hundred percent. I don't know. I hope he straightens this shit out at some point because uh, this is getting tired. Well, I'm just tired of everybody barging in everybody's rooms. Yeah, but if you're going to, you might as well get the bonus of Doc's pants being pulled down. Oh, okay. Well, yeah, I guess so. I'm a big anything that's pants, humiliating so. the Doc is, yeah, is a true. win in my books, honestly. <laughs> well, I kind of feel like the whole boat, though. Honestly, like you know, the crew they all work together, so it's sort of like a big frat house. Yeah, kind of. Yeah. You know what I mean? They all are very fratty, boy. Mm. They all just, everyone knows everybody's business. They're all involved in everybody's lives, and they just bust into each other's rooms like oh siblings God, almost. so true. And, you know, yeah. I was thinking, if this was Max or Cinemax after dark. Oh, wow, yeah. And Doc had his pants down, she'd yeah. be, like, strapping. And oh, he'd yeah. be, and they'd walk in, and it's, there'd be something real. Uh, real lightweight. after dark kind of stuff yeah, happening. after dark. Yeah. Right. Well, that would have been funnier. 
But, uh, you know, that's where we are, 1979, 1979. as we close down. Now, K- Caleb, may I ask you a question, though, before we end the show? Are you able to give yeah. me any updates on what happened with that lady and her taxi cab driver? Oh. Did they hook yeah. up? Did they did they fall in love and get married? That's a good question. Actually, yes. Oh, wait, what? <laughs> what? Uh, all of that? <laughs> I knew it. <laughs> so their whole story arc was basically she was trying to get the cab driver like a girlfriend or something. And he was trying to get her a boyfriend kind of thing. Mm-hmm. And she was saying like, oh, I'm so sick and tired of his boys saying I love you on the first date and then never giving me back anything else or sending me uh, mixed sig- like signals. And it, I can't, I don't like that. It's, but it's trash. And the ca- uh, taxi cab driver is like, yeah, I, I get that. And he's, he's some sort of, I didn't find him funny, but every shot he was in, there was always a, a laugh track. He was mm-hmm. always making a fool of himself, but he like he meant it. Like he was some sort of comedic cap, uh, t- t- taxi cab driver. Uh, well, at the very end, they're standing out looking at the the sunset across the sea, and she kind of alludes to him that she's in love with him or she has like a crush on him, and he goes, "Well, we'll just be best friends, best friends forever. We, we won't rush anything. We we'll just." We're good friends for life. For life, we that, that we can't ruin that by just being good friends. And she was like, "Oh, yeah, I, I guess so." Uh, quick question though: Can best friends kiss? Oh. And he goes, mm. "Yeah, sure, why not?" And so they kiss, and then it like cuts to them like later still kissing. And then he goes, he he says something on the lines of like, "Well, I don't think best friends kiss uh, this many times at number fifty. I don't think it's considered best friends anymore." And then she cracks a laugh and then at the end when they're all departing the boat just like every love boat episode he says like um well i hear wedding bells and julie's like oh congratulations the the woman's like yeah i know it was fast but we're getting married and then they they leave and (laughs) that's that's it wow I could have swore I had seen that woman in a lot of shows, and it turns out I probably did. Her name is an attractive lady uh, back in the day, Arlene Galanka. She was a Chicagoan actress who moved to L.A. and did tons of roles. She has a very impressive sort of one shot on every kind of show that was out there, including MASH and the Mary oh, wow, Tyler Moore okay. Show, All in the Family. Bubble-Headed Dits was the role she played. So it didn't seem like she ever locked on to anything big, but you could see in her interplay with Buddy Hackett that Mm -hmm. that worked. That looked funny. And, man, I would pay to see more of that. I would, too, actually. But you know what? That thing that you said, Kayla, that she said to him is, I'm so tired of men telling me after the first date that they love me. Guys, never do that. (laughs) Ever. Ever. Even if it is coming out of your mouth, take yourself to the bathroom and scream it into a mirror. If you tell a girl that you love her on the first date, it's red flags like crazy. Producer Caleb, you heard that. You right? heard that, right, Caleb? Oh, I'm, he knows. I'm He's fully, fully aware. Yeah. He's fully, he knows the game. Right. See, I'm, I'm, I'm around Utah people, so it happens daily. Oh, that's right. right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it happens daily. I thought about with, that. With a lot of pretty people. At, you know, in a Utah. lot of pretty people loving on each other out there in yeah, Utah. Yeah. Oh, that's producer true. Caleb, what would you say to an audience that's just sat through these 23 and a half minutes? Minutes of absolute And joy. they want more, but yeah. they don't know how to do it. Where do they go? What do they see and how do they how do they you know yeah. how do they get yeah, it delivered I, I to their real. mailbox thank you well make sure you guys like and subscribe we're on all of your favorite streaming platforms share with a friend and we will see you all on the love boat next week we're sailing away but we will be back with a new episode of crime cruise love boat exposed Make sure to subscribe. We're on all your favorite podcast platforms. And connect with us at loveboatexposed.com. Ladies and gentlemen, it's been a pleasure, but I have duties on the bridge. Good evening. Good evening.